Hi there, it's Liz again and I'd like to speak to you today about free graphics resources that I use all the time online to help me with my websites. Before I get into that, I thought it'd be a good idea to talk to you about three different types of graphic file. So, we're going to address GIFs, JPEGs and PNGs and just before we get into that I just wanted to show you this website that uh, specialises in animated GIFs because the GIF format allows for animation, like this dog here that's moving and these puppies with some hearts um, and this rather interesting dog eat dog animation. Now this is all very 1990s. You saw a lot of this stuff on the web in the early days when people thought it was so cool to have things that jumped about on the, on the page. These are very passe now and you really don't want to have much of this going on at all. But I just wanted to point out that that is a GIF format. But if you've got a GIF image, it doesn't have to move, it can be static as well. Continuing with our look at these three different types of file, I've created three files here, all of the same thing. And one is a GIF file, the other one is a JPEG, and the last one is a PNG file. If we quickly take a look at the details of that, you can see that I've made the images all exactly the same physical size in that they are the same number of pixels wide and high but the three different formats turn up three very different file sizes. You can see that the ping file is the largest, the JPEG is the middle one and the GIF has the least amount of information in it so it's the smallest file size. So if you want to put an image on the internet you may be thinking well the GIF one's the best one because it's going to have the least impact on the page loading time of my page and you'd be right, it would. You can of course save any of these files with different levels of quality. I've just taken a good quality version of each one as a demonstration. I've placed the three files on this WordPress page which you can go and visit if you want to. It's here at test page WordPress tips example one to show you the three files. And I'm just wondering, can you see anything that's different? This is the GIF, the JPEG and the PNG. So far they look exactly the same to me. The difference comes in what background you want to put them on. And if you go and look at this test page where I've actually put a different background on the page, you can see that the GIF file doesn't do particularly well. Around it it's got this sort of white edging, so it's not very convincing on the background when the background is complicated. It looks fine on a white background because the white edges are lost on the white background. Notice that the GIF and the PNG are capable of transparency. You can arrange the file to only show the object that you want to show and you can have the background completely transparent so that whatever's behind the picture shows through. That's not possible with the JPEG. A JPEG either has to be a full image that goes all the way up to the edges say if you took any image with your camera that would be the case but if you're looking at some sort of graphic like this that you want to isolate then a JPEG isn't the right format because it always has to be on a background of its own and the ping file if you look at this and compare it to the GIF you can see that it also has transparency but it doesn't suffer from this edging problem around complicated areas of the image. So the ping file is ideal for using when you want to have a complex background and an isolated image placed on it. The JPEG file format is best when you have a photograph or any image that goes right up to the edges and for which you do not require a transparent background. And well, the GIF file, I, I don't use them anymore because they're not that good for transparency and I don't need any animations because they are also capable of animations. So these are the two file formats I think you should be spending your time with. One further thing I should point out is that ping files don't have to be transparent. They can be transparent if you wish, but usually if you include a background as well in a ping file, usually you'll find that the file size is larger than the equivalent JPEG. Not always, it just depends on the number of colours used in the image. A good rule of thumb is that anything that you want to go completely up to the edges should be a JPEG and anything that requires transparency should be a ping. Most of the time that will mean graphics like this, i.e. drawings, not real pictures of real people. 
However, obviously you could take a picture of somebody that was real or an object that was real and then in a graphics program you could isolate out the background by removing it. So in that case you would use a ping as well because you have a photograph that you've edited to take the background out. But in general, if the photograph goes all the way up to the edges then usually a JPEG is the best format. JPEGs can give the illusion of being isolated if they happen to be on the same colour background as the page they're sitting on. So in this example, it's clear that this palm tree is not isolated. However, on this page, it looks as if it is because it's on a white background. That's one of the reasons it's often a lot easier for you if you have a website whose pages are white because it means that when you use stock photography, you're not continually having to find images that have transparency built in. A website can look a little bit untidy if you've got a different colour background to white and then every image you've got is on a white background if it's not a photograph but something that ought to be isolated. This website belongs to a charity and they're in the process of having this site rebuilt so it'll look better I think when the new site arrives but the current site does display some of the problems we were talking about. Their main areas are not on white, they're on grey and of course their header's got colours in it and the header, if you notice, is complex, it's not a solid colour, it's got different variations of blue in it and this is the logo that they're using and of course it just doesn't look right. That should be an isolated image here and it should sit on the background without having a box around it like that. That's a good example of something that's been put on without transparency when it should have been. And if we move down the page, we'll see that there are other examples of it uh, going on, like here. Here's a picture of a dog on a white box, but in fact that should have been a transparent picture because it would look so much nicer if the dog was sitting as if suspended in air on that sidebar as opposed to being stuck in a box. They're a brilliant organisation, I've just rehomed a dog from here myself, but that's what reminded me that they had some graphic errors on their website. Anyway, it's a good example to show you.